second. And there. Hello. 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 Good morning, Church 247. Come on inside. Remind me next time I see you. We want to take just a minute this morning and remember all of our patriots that have sacrificed their lives for our freedom. It means a lot. We go through day to day and never really think about that, but there are thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people that have given their lives for our freedom. We walk around, we can worship together, we can talk together, we can do whatever we want. We're the freest country in the world. And sometime today, just take take a thought. You may have a family member or uh, a grandpa. I know that I have elders that have passed in the wars. But just take a minute to think about them and to, and to thank them for the ultimate sacrifice. I'm sure that you've heard the phrase that some have served and uh, some gave some and some gave all, but there's a lot that gave all for our freedom. So I just thank God for our freedom. I thank God for the United States. And I thank God for all of those that sacrificed their lives for us to have freedom. So just think about someone today and just lift them up in prayer, a family member or something, just, just to remind us of how, just how so blessed we are here in the United States of America. So stand up with us as we sing this song, God Bless the USA. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I worked for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here. And they can't take that away.
Brother of the Week, Sister John Drop. And if you need anything, please reach out to Kim for this week. On Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to have weekly prayer here at the Worship Center. Wednesday at 7. Um, we are not going to have Bible study. Feel free to come. We're going to have a ice cream social out underneath um, the portico. So everyone is welcome to come there. That is the day that Pastor Clay and Hope will be returning from Israel. So we just want to celebrate and fellowship with them and hear all their stories of, um, of their travels. On Thursday at 6. And then next week, from 6.30 till 8.30, we're going to do Vacation Bible School. Um, it'll be here Sunday through Wednesday. On Thursday night, we're going to do the last night over at the camp. <clears throat> and those of you that are helping with BBS, please be here on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We're going to do the Saturday, June the 11th from 10 to 1. We're having a car wash to raise funds for the building project at the camp. So that's a car wash at the camp. If you want details, see Tyler. He's not here today, but see him maybe on Wednesday. Um, Saturday, June the 11th at 1130, we will feed the um, people in need. At 2 o'clock, there's going to be a Norwex environmental party hosted by Dawn and Bonnie Hughes and the Gather, if anyone's interested and would like to attend. And then June the 13th through the 17th, um, the Hedge is heading to youth camp for summer camp. So um, I think that's all that we have. Okay, let's stand and worship.
this morning. Um, I've got a short little devotional here. Jesus helps us to long for real food, spiritual food. That brings satisfaction to our souls. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. First, the bread of which he spoke is a person, not a commodity. Second, when we people put their trust in Jesus for forgiveness of their sins, they enter into a relationship with him, find fulfillment for every craving of their soul. This bread is everlasting in life. When we place our trust in Jesus, the true bread from heaven, Lord, and just thank you that Michael's here, Lord, and uh, give him the words, Lord, give us. I just thank you for all you do in our lives each and every day, Lord, and thank you for a church that we can come to you and worship you openly. Lord, Lord, keep them safe, and Lord, be with the uh, families in Texas and that have uh, been affected by this horrible crime. Lord, I just thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace you bestow on us, Lord, and give uh, Hope and Clay another wonderful day, and give them trace, trace safe travels back on Wednesday. Thank you so much. Love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've learned to 
understand Cause Lord I can't even walk Oh Lord I can't even walk Without you all in my this morning. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure this thing's on. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Get all these papers out of here. Can we do something this morning? Sure. Let's just kind of... <laughs> Good answer. Can we just kind of let's change our focus? Let's just get along with God. I don't mean as everybody collective getting along with God. I mean as though it's just you and God. Let's just take some time and listen for the voice of God Almighty. Let's just take a few minutes and listen. If that's if that's not the norm for you, if you're not used to that, it's okay. Sit there in silence and just listen for the voice of God. Let's take a few minutes. your voice. God, we are so thankful that we are just mere men, mere women in this room. We are nobody major. We are nothing important. God, you love us. You saw us at our worst, God. And you still called each one of us by name. Father, I pray if there's anybody in this place that they don't know your voice, God. God, that you would minister to their hearts. That right now your Holy Ghost will pour out your love. That 
they would surrender everything completely unto you, God. Father, if there's anyone in this room that maybe they used to hear your voice, God. But Lord, they haven't heard you in a while. Father, I pray, Lord, that you reveal things to their hearts and their minds. And that you enlighten them, God. And Lord, that whatever it is, be it hindrance or sin, Father, whatever it would be, Father, that you would reveal it and that they would surrender it. For those in here, God, that hear your voice every day, for those that have that talk with you every day, Lord, right now, Lord, just give them just a hug right now. Embrace them, Lord, as only you can in your spirit. It's a hug. ...in the Father's arms and to be embraced and loved by you. God, we're so many different people in this room. We have one God. There's one God and one spirit and many members. We and for every member in this room, for everyone and their special calling and their special purpose, God, Father, lift them up. Father, your word says that if you would be lifted up, that you would draw all men to yourself. I pray that that's what we do this morning in this room. That we lift you up, Father. We bless your name, God, that you would speak to us. We bless you with all of our souls, souls and all of our lives, God. For you are worthy. That price that you paid, that value, Lord, we give it all to you because of what you gave for us. We worship you, King Jesus. Amen. I feel like God is saying uh, that it's not by strength and it's not by power or might, but it's by his spirit and his spirit alone. Amen. Amen. You guys, are y'all wanting to worship in this place this morning? Amen. 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 Worship don't stop whenever the singing stops. Amen. Amen. It keeps on going. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible says, Become all things to all men that we may win some. And brother, it's talking you did it with the contemporary. <laughs> Blessed to be here today. Amen. I'd only met him just uh, just one time. We sat down together at Sugar and Spice. And man, what a blessing it was. You guys have a, a wonderful time. I met him. Amen. Y'all ready to dig deep into the Word of God? Good, because I don't know where we're going or what we're doing, okay? We're just going to see. I got some scribbled notes here uh, that I kind of jumbled together and said, Lord, what are you going to say? And I feel like God wants me to speak on life this morning. See, a lot of people, we don't understand what life truly is. See, the Word of God, there's, when you read in the New Testament, there's two different words. Okay? It was written in Greek in the New Testament. And the Greek word for life, you've got two different, which one is puske. Now, listen, I'm not Greek by any means, so I'm trying this, okay? It's puske, which means life or breath. So basically that means existence. Okay? That means somebody who is alive and walking this earth. Right? But then there's another life, and this life is Zoe, okay? which this is your eternal life. And the eternal life, it doesn't start when we die and we go to heaven. 
You don't enter into eternal life at the moment of death. It does not work that way. You don't get buried into the ground and then have eternal life. See, eternal life, eternity, has no beginning and no end. And so whenever you come to know and meet Jesus Christ, it is in that moment that you step into something that has just always been. It's eternity, and it will always be. Is that not amazing? Amen. Y'all better give me some amens up here. I will sit down again. <laughs> I will sit down right here, and I will not move till I get at least five amens and two hallelujahs, I promise you. Amen. <laughs> it's your purpose. That eternal life is where you enter into hopefully borrow a pen and I just went one, two, three, four, five and just started trying to put stuff in order. Because I'm telling you, I write it down in all kinds of chaos. But God Almighty can bring it in order. All right, so we're going to start. Let's see, where did I put that number one? We're going to start in Matthew chapter 19. I scared my wife on the way over here. I had this same paper sitting in between the seats in the van, and God just hit me with something, man. And so immediately, I, I had a pen in my ear, pulled that thing out, and I'm driving down the road, and I started writing. And I could tell you, it, it scared her. She didn't say nothing. She's a good, faithful wife, but man, I could tell. She's sinking in her head. We got the kids in the back. You ain't even watching the road. We made it here. 19. See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man... ...twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and inherit eternal life. Now, as I, as I read that, I was thinking, we're celebrating, and there's a lot of men and women, Their families, their lands, parents, children. And they answer a call to go and serve. They serve their country. And because of And I believe with all my heart that God truly has blessed the United States of America. They answered the call to serve. And they gave their life for it. Church, I want to tell you something. We are God's army. I don't care how old you are and I don't care how young you are. I don't care how pretty you are or how ugly you are. Amen? Amen? We are God's army. It ain't anything to do with us. I can tell you in Isaiah chapter 53 when it talks about our Savior... It says there was no beauty and there was no comeliness about him that any man would desire to follow him. It wasn't about this great man who was walking the earth. It was about a lowly servant that came into this world, God Almighty and King of all kings, coming into this world as born of a woman. It was, he didn't come. He could have came. The Bible says that even on that cross, he could have called ten thousands of angels just like that. And they would have gotten him off of that cross. 
But see, it wasn't that he came in great authority, although he had all authority because he is the creator of all things. It says that every bit of the Godhead he laid to the side and became a man so that you and I could be free. So that you and I could be saved from we were bound by so much. Man, are you set free this morning? As God's army, we are to walk as the light of Christ. And we are, see in 2 Timothy, it, it literally, it calls us good soldiers. Now, Paul was writing to Timothy, but I don't know about you. When you're reading the word of God, does it pertain to you as you read it? So even though that letter was written to Timothy, who's he talking to? Of Jesus Christ. Right? As good soldiers. Of Jesus Christ. That we should not be entangled. In our civilian affairs. Because church we are at war. Amen. Amen. We are at war. Every day all around you. We are at war. So what does someone do? What does a soldier do when he's at war? He's in the trenches. And he's fighting an enemy. Well, your life should be in the trenches. And listen, I'm not just talking about you. I know the devil will come at you, and the devil will get all over your back. But I will also tell you this. In the book of James, the word of God is so clear. It says that if we submit to God and we resist the devil, that the devil will flee. So we shouldn't always have the devil on our backs. If we constantly have the devil on our backs, then something's off in our theology or our understanding of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. See, even Jesus was tempted in the desert, was he not? And when he was tempted and he resisted the devil, the Bible was so clear when it says that the devil, he walked away. He didn't come back for a season, is what the word says. And so there are seasons in our life where we don't have this monkey called the devil on our backs. There is a season in our life, and that doesn't mean that everything is going great. That doesn't mean that things are going wonderfully in our lives. That just means that something in our life is so good that all these little nuisances all around us, they don't affect us in the way that they used to because we're walking in a new season. Is that not beautiful? So if we're in the trenches and we're fighting an enemy, we shouldn't always just be fighting the enemy for our own sakes. There has to be times where we realize the enemy is attacking our brothers and our sisters and those all around us. We should have second you and says, pull over right here, right now, because there is someone the devil is all over. And you might just go and you might see and hear the voice of God and speak exactly what was intended for that person's life in that very moment. The Bible was so clear. See, I used to take the verse and I would get it wrong. You ever so I, I used to say, the power of life and death are in the tongue. Is that what the scripture says? The scripture says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Now that brings it to a whole other context. It brings it to a whole other meaning. See, life and death are in the power. So not the power of life and death, but life and death are in the power of the tongue. So it is the things that we say. And so God knows that this, this voice that we have, the Bible says that we speak, and we speak as though we're proclaiming the oracles of God. And so that means that whenever you go to that person, and the Holy Spirit gives you those words to say. And in that moment, you speak. And power enters into this person. And I'll tell you this, church. Silence is deadly. Silence is deadly. To do. When we don't go and we don't speak life into this person, ultimately, what do we speak? Death. be the devil, I'm going to tell you right now, there was a third of the angels that was cast out of heaven, and those angels that were cast out of heaven, they're what? 
They're demons. They're demons. And they are they are trying to destroy as many as they can. When Jesus walked into the temple, that man that was possessed with a demon fell down and he asked God, What? Have you come to torment us before our time? They know that they only have a certain amount of time and they're wanting to take as many to hell with them as they can. But God, he's got angels. Amen? An angel doesn't always just mean an angelic being that is in the heavens. The Bible, it, it calls when you read about Jesus when he sends messengers to John the Baptist and that word that he uses for when Jesus sent messengers to go back and speak to John the Baptist to say tell him that the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk right when he sent those messengers back in that moment that Jesus sent them with the message because angel is just a messenger that word when you look it up in the Greek is angel and so there are times, listen, I did a sermon a while back talking about how we are angels. We are messengers used for God. Amen? We are messengers. Now keep that in context, okay? I'm not saying that we're celestial beings in any fashion because when you look at the, the theology and the doctrine of the Word of God, it says, Know ye not that you and I will judge angels. Amen? So I'm saying that we are called to be messengers for God Almighty. And a messenger, there is a purpose for his life, that he is not just existing, but he has meaning, and he has purpose. And that is faith. And I'm telling you, every day that you get up, if you don't know your purpose, if you're new in your walk, and you don't know what the meaning of life is for your own life, Every day, whatever it takes, get along with God. Get in a dark room and just close everything off, every distraction and everything that can be a hindrance, and just sit down in this quiet, still place and listen for the voice of God. Because I'm telling you right now, you have a purpose. I did it. I thought this was what it meant to stand behind the pulpit and to preach His good news. I learned really quick that that was not my purpose. That my purpose as a minister is not to just stand behind a pulpit and to preach his good news. But he showed me and revealed that my purpose is to reach out to those who were just like me. When I was lost and dead in my sin and my addiction and everything that I was going through, when I felt like I was just so depraved and that there was nothing good in me and that there was nothing that I could do, there was no hope for Michael McLemore. Whenever God revealed that in me, that there was many people just like me. So I can come up here and I can preach behind the podium. I can speak the word of God, but if I'm not going out here and living it, then I'm just a hearer of God's word, not a doer, and I'm deceiving myself, is what the book of James said. Amen? Amen. Thriving. Do we have joy? Because when we talk about the Zoe life, not the Puske, but the Zoe, when we're talking about the eternal life, that is our identity, that our lives are found in the identity of of Jesus Christ. Is this good stuff? Is, are you learning something here? I think I'm learning a little bit myself. So it says, listen, let me put it to you this way. Ephesians chapter 2, in that very first verse, it says you. So who's he talking to? Is he just talking to the Ephesians? Was he just talking to Timothy? Who were once dead in your trespasses. Wait a minute. All we, if all we have is that Puske life, that breath, that mere existence, if that's all we have, then the word says that we were dead. See? Because I will tell you, Animals have that Puske life. Plants and trees have that Puske life, right? 
They are breathing, they're existing, right? But Jesus said this. He says, but listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not willing to praise my name, if you're not willing to stand up and scream and shout, the rocks. They will make the rocks cry out. You see? And so it's not. Without him, there is no life. He is the way, the truth, and what? The life. And no man goes to the Father but through him. Man, I'm going to tell you. One of the enemies, one of these demons that works for that old devil is depression. Depression. If there's anybody in this room right now, because God, when you come to know Him, the Bible says it, that when you know how much you've been forgiven, those who are forgiven much, they love much. And so something comes out of them because they recognize of what God did for them. Something comes out of them because they know of what God did for them. And when we're confound to our houses because of depression, when we won't pick up that phone because of depression, when we won't go anywhere because of depression, when we want to talk another demon called addiction. When everything in life it seems like it's just going wrong. When things in life it seems like everything around you has fallen apart. And so the only way that you can cope is you have to numb the pain. The only way that you can survive the only way you can make it through another day is to numb the pain. It's not living, church. It's merely existing. There's so many demons out here in this world that have people, they've got them deceived. And they're broken. And it's not like the Spirit of God is not calling them. The Spirit of God is at the, uh, I love where the book of Proverbs says that wisdom stands at the city streets and the city gates and she screams to be heard. You see? But there are people in this world that Jesus says, to him who has ears to hear. People can't hear the Spirit of God. Corinthians says it this way. says that the God of this world, and it's a lowercase g, and it's talking about the devil. It says the God of this world has people blinded. It is like a veil that covers their eyes, and they cannot see the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the devil has people blinded. Blinded. That's not living and that is not life. There's a lot of people that play the, the show where they put on that happy face. And they come to a place called church. And they will stand in church and they will shout hallelujah. And they will shake the hands and they will say amen. And they will leave and they will leave out and they will walk right back out into that mere existence. Not walking Life comes through the authority of Jesus Christ. See, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 29, it says that the people were astonished. Astonished with Jesus as he was teaching, right? In Matthew 7, that's where he's ending that Sermon on the Mount. And so he's got that Matthew 5, 6, and 7, those three chapters. And all of those chapters, except for the last couple of verses, they're written in red because they're the words of Jesus Christ. And it's the sermon that he preaches on the mountainside. And people were astonished at his teachings. And they said, because he is one who spoke with authority. They said, who is this man? Well, Jesus said who he was in John chapter 6. He says, your fathers, they ate the bread that came down from heaven. They ate manna. You know what the word for manna is? What is it? That's literally the word. I'm not asking you. The word is, what is it? So when this, 
When the, that's what the word manna means. They didn't understand what this food was that just showed up on the ground every morning. What is it? The bread that came down from heaven. They ate it and they died. Jesus said, but I'm the bread of life. Amen. That's that Zoe life. I am the bread of life. And he said, he says in John 6, if anyone would eat of his flesh and drink of his walked away from it. They turned around and they walked away. That was a hard teaching for them to understand. And Jesus looks at his 12 and said, are you going to leave me too? And then old faithful Peter says, where else will we go, Lord? You have the words of Jesus said, I am the true bread of life. So in the Old Testament, when there was manna, they said, what is it? And when the bread of life came and he spoke as one, with such great authority, his words have the power to completely wreck your skue. And give you Zoe. Amen. I'm not a scholar, nor am I a, uh, a teacher in any fashion. Okay, listen, I just love God Almighty, and I love His Spirit, man, and I love connecting with Him on a daily basis. I might walk around sometimes, uh, as much as I've got going on, people will look at me and be like, Michael, are you mad? What do you mean am I mad? No, I'm not mad. I got a lot going on. But man, I got Jesus. Amen. Amen. I got joy. This mind's always working. It's always running. Listen, I got all these notes right here. I probably covered about 2% of them. Because my mind is always going for Jesus Christ. Amen. Always going for Jesus Christ. So the question is, what is life? Jesus says this. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there's your heart. It's the things that you live for. It's the things that you hope for. Where your treasure is, there's your heart. And so what is our heart chasing after? Listen, Paul told the Corinthian church, he says, examine yourself to see whether or not you are in the Right? If they ain't got it by now, something's off. He done wrote them a second letter. It was the third time they did visit them. He's writing them for the second time. And he's telling them, listen, exactly. What are you chasing after? If you were to examine your life right now, is your life simply existing? Do you get filled up when you go to church and then when you leave church, the next thing you know, you start getting depleted. You don't make it on Wednesday night. You keep getting depleted and depleted until you get back on Sunday and then you get filled again. Church, that is not living. Peace. Amen. Amen. Listen. If by Thursday night you're laying in the bed and all the, all the week previous has got you down in the dumps, you don't have to come to church to find Jesus. You don't have to come to this altar to find Jesus. You don't have to wait till that cowboy stands up and starts singing the praises of God to enter into the courts of his praise. The word of God says this. Do you know that he is enthroned on the praises of our lips? Could you see Jesus and his father simply on the throne on Sunday morning? Uh, his throne. His kingdom is forever. And no matter what we're going through, see, so many of us, the circumstances and the situations of life, 
church. The circumstances and the situations that we go through, they will begin to dictate who we are as men and women of God. That's not how it should be, church. There was simply one test him to curse your name. I can get him to curse your name. Remove your hand from him. And I guarantee he will curse your name. How many times have we gone through 1% of what Job went through? And we get angry with God. Do we still carry hurt and resentment? Things that still hold us back. If you still carry that today, church, it is time to let it go. There are things in your life that will hinder your purpose in life. And your purpose in life is great because you are a soldier for God. You're supposed to be in those trenches. And you're supposed to be loving people and you're supposed to love the hell out of them. And if that offends you, I'm sorry, but it is God's truth. Jude says, go and pull them, snatch them out of the very flame. I'm going to tell you this, the word of God is so clear that whenever Peter, he told Jesus, he says, listen, you, thou art the son of God. And Jesus replies very simply, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Simon Barjona. He says, but this came from God Almighty. Amen. This came from the Father, this revelation. He says, and it is upon this revelation that I will build my church, All right? He says that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now the only way that you can be at the gates of hell as a Christian man or woman is to be standing at the gates of hell. Right? The gates were a place of judgment in the Old Testament scriptures. When they came to the gates, they came and they met a judge. Right, And I'm going to tell you right now, there is a devil that is he is the accuser of the brethren. He thinks that he can judge them and all he can bring is condemnation. There is no mercy and there is no grace within him. And all he does is bring He as the church are to stand at those gates. And we are to bring the judgment of Jesus Christ. And that is his grace. And that is his mercy. That is that he doesn't want to be their judge yet. That there is going to come a day when he is going to be their judge. But as of right now, the word of God in 2 Corinthians 5 says that he is not counting the sins of the people against them. wants to be their father. And that's where it goes on and it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ, the life of Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. There's that life, church. There's that walking in that newness of life. Listen, if you're still getting up, man, and you're having to go and you're getting that old manna, right, every day, man, you need some fresh manna. Listen, if you're getting up and you're still you're living in those glory days of 10 and 15 years ago, listen, it's time to find that fresh manna. It's time to go to that fresh water. Because I'm telling you, water is water, but if it ain't moving, it's stagnant. It's as simple as that, and it stinks. It smells really bad. Do you ever smell just stagnant water? Oh, man, breeze mosquitoes and everything else. Horrible stuff. But water that is flowing, that is always moving, We ain't moving, we'll stand. Oh, we can have life. We can have existence. But if we ain't in Christ Jesus, you know that life stinks. You know that life, it breeds nothing but destruction and corruption. And church, I want you to know it's very clear. It says that if all we have is hope, in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If 
all we want is just to have a good life here and then meet Jesus. We've missed it. If all we want is just to have a good life here and then meet Jesus, we've missed it. That same chapter, Isaiah 53, where it talks about there was no beauty or comeliness about him that we would desire to follow him. It also calls him a man of water. He was a man of sorrows. It says they considered him stricken and we esteemed him not. Who was Isaiah writing to then? out there, listen, we were having a tent revival outside of our church when we were planted in Gaffney. And when we were doing this tent revival, a car rides by and said, Jesus should have been aborted. That's the world that we live in, church. It's everywhere. You don't see churches thriving and flourishing these days. They used to. That simply means people ain't going. And if they ain't going, what are they doing? See, church is so much more than just a place to come. It's a place to learn. It's a school for that new believer to get to know who God Almighty is. It's a place to come and learn the voice of God and to know what God is calling us to do as His children. It's a place to get to know Him so deeply and so intimately. But that's where it starts. I remember when I learned I could do it in my house. (laughs) I remember that I didn't have to go to church to find Him. He was there. And you know where I found this out? In some of the toughest times of my life. In some of the hardest times of my life. I learned that he was there with me. And I'm telling you, man, I was homeless living in a camper with a a drop cord going through the window. In the midst of my trials. Amen? Because I learned he was there with me. I stopped just existing. And I found my identity in God Almighty. I quit letting everything that I was going through Determine who I was as a man of God. It didn't matter how blessed I was. I was a child of God. It didn't matter how. I was just a child of God. It didn't matter. How heavy the trial was. We're still just children of God. And God is faithful to get us through every single one. The trial and the blessing. Amen? Amen. When we have those spiritual highs and those spiritual lows, we have a poor perception on life. When you're on cloud nine and you want to stay there, you're not going to stay there, church. Because if you stay there, there's a lot of people still down here in the valley That you can't reach. You can't yell to them and say come up here. The church has been trying that for years. Hey come to church. Come to church. Come to church. And God is saying hey. Go to the people. Go to the people. Go to the people. And so there's times. And I love the word of God in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel talks about how there's going to come a time. And we know it as a great tribulation. We know that there's going to come a time the Word of God says there's going to be a time like no other. And in the the birth pains and the beginning of all these things as they happen, it talks about how there's going to be persecution upon people. And I love where Daniel chapter 11 it talks about these people will intend Talking about not being dictated by a spiritual love. 
They didn't just go to help those that were being persecuted. They have such a great love for God's people that they go to help those who are persecuted. Even old Saul of Tarsus needed an Ananias. Amen? Amen. I want you to thrive in life. I want you, when you leave this place, I want you to get into your own word. You've got a Bible. It's at your house. Hopefully it ain't been sitting on the shelf for the past six months. I want you to open up that word. And I want you to begin to begin to dig in that word. And begin to do a search on what is life. And when does my eternal life begin? And you will see that your eternal life begins at that moment when old Nicodemus stood in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, you must be born. Again. See, my sister in law just asked. That baby was just born, but that's not when that baby's life began. That baby's life began inside the womb. But when we have a spiritual birth, when we surrender it all to God Almighty, when we lay it all down at the cross, the good and the bad, I'm going to tell you right now, if I don't put my wife at the cross of Jesus Christ, she will become my idol. If I don't place my beautiful children at the, at the foot of, cro of the cross of Jesus Christ, focus, and I can build a really great life with my wife and my children. And I can completely miss out on the calling of God. You see, whenever me and my wife were praying about whether we should get married, God said very clearly, you and your wife, you and Jessica cannot get married unless she's willing to marry a minister. See, God had something so much more in store than just a good, happy life. And if we got so focused on building that life together, building that house, that family, that cute dog, we would have missed out on a lot of, I call them uncles is what I call them to my boys. I live in a place where every day there's 19 men that are overcoming drugs and alcohol and substance abuse addiction. Some of them the world had turned their back on. Some of them but when I walk out of my house and I see my youngin's hand in one of their hands and I see them walking up that driveway. Church, that's life. That's life. It's your purpose and it is your calling. There is not a person in here right now that God says, I don't have a purpose for your life. Each one of you in here, there is a purpose for your being. Each one of you and he called you by name. It's a great purpose. And it's by his spirit alone, church, that it will be fulfilled. But he promises us this, that if we will keep our eyes focused Where? Take no thought, but seek ye first. That's preeminence, church. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God. be seated in heaven. That is not the kingdom of God. When Jesus gave us the model prayer, listen, it's the model prayer. A brother, he said this the other week. He said, that's not the Lord's prayer. He said, that's a model prayer. That's where he teaches us how to pray. And he says, let your kingdom come and your Hear that, church? Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's not saying seek the heavenlies. He's saying let's see heaven right here on earth. Let's change it. change it. I don't know where you work, but you can change it. I don't know where you go to school, but you can change it. I don't know what restaurant you eat at, but I promise you can change it. I don't know where you shop for your groceries, but I promise you can change it. I don't know what street you're going to drive down and what person you're going to come across, but I promise you, through his faithfulness, man, you can change that person's world if you would just speak right. Amen? Where is the Lord's Prayer, you might ask? John chapter 17. That's where Jesus prays. He prays over his disciples. And then he prays for you and I. But, uh, I can feel it. Some of y'all looking like, man, we're about to go eat. Well, I don't think, listen, you better change that restaurant and you better tip your waitress when you get there or your server, okay? Don't be those people. We're tip it. Right now, brother. Amen. 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 Let's get full. Let's get filled up. And I could come in here. And I can shout from the top of my lungs. And I can give you a sermon. And I can jump all up and down this stage. And I can run these crows, man. I can get it stirred up in here. But God is saying. He doesn't want it to be emotionally driven. He wants us to be stirred up simply because of his word. Simply because of his truth. Amen. Amen. Dig deep into his truth, church. And listen, if you do that self-examination and you feel within your heart that the Spirit of God is telling you that you've just been existing, that you have not been thriving the way that the Spirit is calling you to thrive, if you ain't been walking in that purpose the way that he's calling you to walk in that purpose, now's the time, church. Don't go another day. Don't go another moment. It is so easy to get caught up in those civilian affairs when you're in the midst of war. And you'll miss out on so much. It's like a man in the middle of war that keeps a picture of his wife and kids and all he can do is look at it and wish that he was home with them. And he will miss the entire reason of why he was called into service. Those are a ministry in themselves. But your very first ministry, your first ministry is God Almighty. And he's saying, put on his armor, because it's time for war, church. Amen? Amen. Listen, I'll tell you, I'll carry my, my spiritual sword with me on my side. And I will walk around and I'll have joy. I'll walk around in peace. And when that war comes, I'm still going to have joy. And I'm still going to have peace. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So at this time, I want you guys to come back forward. I don't even know if y'all got music for the end. Do you have music? Uh, no.
go because the iPad is uh, battery dead. Battery is dead. <laughs> Listen, I haven't talked that long. <laughs> And we all know amazing grace. Let's stand up.